hey, it's Friday. Aloha Friday. Just a little reminder to keep the Aloha Friday spirit strong in ourselves. I am going to start by the way we always start. Good morning, first grade. Are you here? Standing up and singing back. Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. Ready? Stand up and reach out. Embrace the day and the sun and say, The sun with loving light makes bright for me each day. The heart with sacred power gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I, with all my might, <clears throat> may love to work and learn. <clears throat> Toward us comes light and strength. From us rise love and thanks. Sing with me, please. Morning has come, night is away. Rise with the sun and welcome the day. Ready? All the way down to your toes. Oh, I like to rise when the sun she rises early in the morning. I like to hear the small birds singing merrily upon their way. Hey, hey. Hooray for the life of a Kona kid tumbling in the sunlit waves. Someone came knocking at my wee small door. Someone came knocking, I'm sure, sure, sure. I opened, I listened, I looked from left to right. Not a creature was stirring in the still dark night. <sighs> Scary. <laughs> All right. We did this story for a P yesterday. I started to say P, 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 P. Peter Piper. Do you remember that one? I think we did it once long ago. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Say that back with me. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. 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 Six. P -p -p. It's like a little explosion. P Different than b. And if Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where is the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? And we could say that again and faster and faster. I'll say it one time kind of fast, and you can say it with me if you remember it. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where is the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? There you have it. The, probably the most, that's probably the most famous tongue twister, at least in my world. All right, Auntie Jackie is here. And I will, I've got her on my little Zoom meeting. It is right here. Auntie Jackie, are you present? She stepped out, apparently. So, I have to sneeze. Dusty and chalky up here. All right, so Auntie Jackie will probably be right back. We'll do the day and the date while we wait for her to return. All right, day and the date. Today is Friday. Cursive F R I D A Y, comma, Friday, dot the I, Friday, O. C T O B E R October across the T twenty third twenty third comma two thousand twenty today is Friday October 
23rd, 2020. Please say it with me. Today is Friday, October 23rd, 2020. In Espanol, hoy es viernes, 23 de octubre. I don't know if I'm saying octubre right, honestly. Uh, 2020. Or 2020, we could probably say. Hoy es viernes, 23 de octubre, 2020, or dos, do, 2020. All right, I see Auntie Jackie is here and ready, and so we will welcome her. Good morning, Auntie Jackie. Good morning, here. Here's my knocking on the door. Knock, knock, knockity knock. Good morning, Mr. Coulter. Good morning, first graders. Good morning. Hi, it's Friday, and we've had a, a meeting every day this week. And then I hear Mr. Coulter telling you things this morning with a pea pickle peppers. So I wanted to share you a few things. One is this thing. You guys, my house is in a beautiful area, and the people who have lived here for nine years have been taking care of it. And he, yesterday he brought me a bunch of these red bananas. A bunch of red bananas, a bunch of bananas. So you may have heard that before. We call it a bunch of bananas, a bunch of bananas, or some people call them a hand here in Hawaii. Well, that's a way to describe a bunch of bananas, a group of bananas. And then I just heard Mr. Coulter saying a peck of pickled peppers. So a peck is also a way to measure an amount. Now a peck could be like a whole bunch in a basket like this. This is a peck and inside this basket here today are the red peppers from my yard. So the red peppers are in a peck. But what is a pickled pepper? Well a pickled pepper is a pepper that you probably cut up a little bit. Uh, so here's my red pepper. I'm going to cut it up and then, in order to make it pickled, we cut it up like this so that the pickling stuff could get inside all the juices, uh, and also inside all the flesh. So here I have my peppers. I got them out of my peck. And now I'm going to take my peppers and I'm going to add some vinegar and call it pickled. So this is a jar of vinegar. And then the vinegar will sit inside these peppers for a little while. Huh, Jackie, your sound cut out. Can you hear me, Jackie? How long was it? Was it cut out for a long time? No, no, just, just a moment. Just a moment. You just just the last was, the last sentence only. I was sliding my bowl of pickled peppers across, and I think it made that happen. So these are vinegar in the peppers, making them pickled. So we have a pickled pepper coming from the peck and Peter that's not me but Peter is my neighbor so I think about so many different things in the day that I wanted to share with you first graders because I love gardening and I think you're getting getting that from me all week I've been talking about soil and um, I read you a book about being on the earth with the soil so I've been bringing these soil things together I so I asked you to like go get a spoon and dig in the soil. I offered you ways that you might put some soil in a jar and mix it up with water. So we're bringing all these different soil pieces together and the log, because the log breaks down and starts turning into soil, as you might see. We're bringing them all together because the soil is part of the earth. And when we read that book to you, when I read that book, that, uh, we were saying children, children of the forest. Try this with me moving around. Children, children of the forest, what can you hear? What can you hear? Children, children, what of the forest, what can you smell? Children, children of the earth, what can you feel? And I always like to stamp my feet into the ground. What can I feel? And all of these things are part of how we go in a day, how we might think about where we're going to get our food. And so I wanted to share with you that actually, I can't, I don't know that I can share it. Let me see if I can share it. It's a song. Nope. I'm going to have to sing you this song instead of putting it on a video. And 
I told you earlier that some people call soil dirt and some people call soil soil because they love it and they know it's made of all these different parts and they realize that soil is not just something that gets on your pants to make them dirty. Soil is the place where all the fruit grows. And this song that I'm going to sing, just a few lines from it, it uses the word dirt so that everyone pays attention because you think of dirt one way. So it's a song that uh, I'll get my guitar later and sing it for you. But it goes like this. Dirt made my lunch. Dirt made my lunch. Dirt made my lunch. Thank you, dirt. Thanks a bunch for the food that we eat and it makes my lunch because dirt made my lunch. So all of these reasons we talk about soil is so that we can understand it better and have really good lunches with really good life force coming right from your gardens, from your neighbors, and from the farmers here in Hawaii that we can eat the food that we grow here and it gives us really good good life force so thank you dirt thanks a bunch i'm gonna invite you to look around you that where you could find something for lunch right outside your door right down the street from your neighbor or even if you're sitting on your lanai and you can see it in the distance that it's a coconut that you could maybe eat someday i invite you to find out where is your lunch that could be all around you and even if you get to go to a farmer's market on the weekend that's going to be from hawaii so here's our friday aloha i'm going to say goodbye to you guys and i'll see you on monday namaste thank you thank you auntie thank you, jackie auntie. that was such a lovely thank lesson thank you so much for quickly dovetailing your lesson into uh what i was bringing with the peppers yes thank you you pickled some peppers before our eyes in about five seconds you prepared for that i was very impressive <laughs> all right and thank I, you bye all right, bye bye okay so i've got this beeswax in my hand because i'm thinking i'm gonna um form a letter p later with it but first i want to do um, a little tiny bit of movement here. Let's do our, our sailor went to sea. And I don't have hope with me up here this time, but maybe she'll come back. The sailor, ready? Ready? Together. The sailor went, wait, the sailor, set. lap first, my bad. The sailor, lap together, went to C C C to see what she could see 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 but all that she could see 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 was the bottom of the deep blue C C C Okay a little faster Remember it's lap together with me lap together with me 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 Okay, lap together with me, lap together with me, that's the sailor one, two, yeah. Lap together with me, lap together with me, me, me. And then it repeats, lap together with me, lap together with me, me, me. Lap together with me, lap together with me, me, me. Do that with me. Lap together with me, lap together with me, me, me. Lap together with me, lap together with me, me, me. Ready? The sailor went to see, 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 to see what she could see, see, see. But all that she could see, 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 was the bottom of the deep blue sea, see, see. All right. Miss Mary Mac, 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 all dressed in black. You better be doing this with me. I'll be so sad if I'm just doing it all by myself. Black. Black with silver buttons, buttons, buttons all down her back, back, back. She asked her mother, mother, mother for 50 cents, cents, cents to see the elephants, elephants, elephants jump over the fence, fence, fence. They jump so high, high. High, they reach the sky, 
sky, sky, and they never came back, 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 till the 4th of July, lie, lie. Quick, new shoes. Ready to stand up? Here we go. New shoes, new shoes, red and brown and blue shoes, fat shoes and flat shoes, and stomp around like that shoes. Which shoes shall I choose? One more time. New shoes, new shoes, red and brown and blue shoes, fat shoes and flat shoes, and stomp around like that shoes. Which shoes shall I choose? Lost my balance there. All right, so now we'll go back over to here to my little chalkboard, and I've set this up like it is at school with, we have that little 10 chart, and here we have the number of days of school so far. So we have, let's count them up. I see one, two, three, four, five, and I see one, two, three, four, five, and we know that five and five are 10. So we count this whole row together, this whole row together, Right here is 10. And then this is another 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that's another 10 right there. And we, so we could say 10 and 10 is 20. 10, 20. And of course, it's exactly the same. There's there, 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 there. And so we know that this one is also 10 because it looks just the same. It's piled up exactly the same way. They're all the same size and they're all the same. So each one of those is 10. This one's 10, this one's 10, and that one's 10. And together we can say 10, I think I'm gonna write this a different way. So we know each one of those is 10 and I'm gonna bounce from one to the next. I'm gonna say this one is 10, and I'm gonna bounce over to here, and that means we've got 20 all together, and then I bounce over to there, and I've got 30 all together, 10, 20, 30. Of course, if we weren't sure if that was 10, we could also count it by fives, that's practice, ready? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. We know this is 30, and we can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We know this row of pinks is 5 already. So we can see that it's 5, and we know that that's 5 also because it looks the same. And we can even quickly tell that that's 5 pretty well, even the, way, the same way we can go like this. And I said, how many is that? Well, you didn't have time to count it, but you know it's 5 already. So we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And today's the 36th day of school, so I'll fill in one more like that. And this whole thing happens to be 100. So I'm going to erase this up here and just show you that when we're counting to 100 by tens, we can do it by ones. We can. We could go one, two, we could start down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. But we already know that counting by tens goes like this: ten, twenty. Wouldn't that be a lot easier than doing all what I just did? And I could continue: twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. We already know that that's 30 because we counted them by tens. 10, 20, 30. And it would be a good idea for you to make a grid like this, a grid like that of 100. And this is 100, and I'll tell you that right now, but I can count them and tell you how that works. 10, 20, 30. I and mean, if we know how to count by tens, we can keep going. 40, I'll give you a hint with my 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So when we fill all of those up, we'll have 100 days of school and we should really have a celebration of some sort. I don't know what day that falls on, but it's a um, little more than halfway through a school year once we get to 100 days. And so far we only have that many, 35, which is, 
that's a good a good number of days of school. So I hope you've been participating in every day of school because that's the way that you learn the most. And if you do things like make this, then you'll have more fun because just watching me do it isn't as fun as doing it yourself. So if someone can make you this grid of 100, then you could make your own fill them in uh, boxes each day. That would be a good project. All right, so from there, we will go back to our main lesson book and do our form drawing that hopefully you practiced. So, actually, I think I'm going to switch the chairs around. It's a little bit higher up. Okay. So this form drawing, we remember, along with this bright pink color here. This one was the castle turrets, remember? So it went like, went like down and up and across, down and up and across. So curve and a straight. Curve and a straight. I'll show you with my finger first. Curve, straight. Curve, straight. Curve, straight. I'll start with the curve. Curve, straight. Curve. I'm making that a little bit differently than I did before, didn't I? I'm curving it the whole way, almost the whole way, instead of making this come straight down. Either way works. Straight. Curve. Straight. Curve. And I ran out of room. I'm going to do another one because I know that you may have practiced it the other way with just a straight down curve at the bottom and up to the straight. Curve at the very bottom, and up, and then straight across. Curve, and straight, curve, and straight. OK, so that's in the main lesson book with, and if you did two of them, that's fine on your page. I didn't really tell you how to do that, did I? I meant it to be on a page like this, and you could make room for two of them. Curve straight. It's probably too late for me to be telling you this now. Curve straight, and down here, curve straight, curve straight, curve straight, like so. Now you can't really see that. I didn't really draw it on there, but um, however you ended up doing it, that's okay. My fault for not really telling you ahead of time. And then we can put a border around it. Way to the top of your page. Okay, and then if you since this, this since it is your main lesson book, because it is your main lesson book, you should make each page filled right up with color. I think that mostly we almost always put a background on everything. We almost never leave anything just plain white paper. Sometimes we cover color very lightly, but we will fill the whole page with color. And I know that took me not, that took me a lot less time than it might take you. That's okay. You take your time, you pause the video, and you do it slowly, and as slowly as you need. And then I'm gonna go back over this because Uh, I, with chalk, it covers it up a little bit. My other one started over here where the border is. Oh, well. It's my main lesson book, so I want to do my best work. And I'm going faster than you will likely be able to go. So you just pause it. All right, so there's two, two different versions of that. Either version would be fine, or one of each is fine. And now we have our main lesson drawing, our form drawing for the day. Now I'm going to turn this around. I can't remember what's on the other side. Oh, yes. 
good old K for king. Still kind of there. And there's the K down there, but let's, um, let's make a new main lesson page. Let's make it like this. Main lesson page. It doesn't matter whether the spiral's on this side or this side, as long as you're, up. and as long as you're at the very next blank page. So the very next blank page and main lesson book right side up. You can double check that you've got that correct unless you already did. And I'm going to put my line across the middle like so with my blue crayon most likely. And this is the one where we need to make our letter P, our lowercase letter P go down into the basement. So I'm going to make this that I've just done here on the blackboard and I'm going to say that this is the whole page like that. So that's about the same shape. See, I have a, sh a rectangle shape of a rectangular shape paper and a much bigger, more or less congruent rectangle shape on the blackboard. So this is the same thing. So the only thing I don't have on the blackboard, which I do have on my paper, is the line in the middle. So I'm going to say, where's the middle of this giant page? And I'm going to say it's about right here. So now I'm going to pretend that this is my main lesson book. And you will just have your real main lesson book. There's my line in the middle. I don't think you can quite see the scope of that, the scale of it. There we go. That's a little better. You can see the whole thing. I see my spacing is not quite perfect, maybe, or maybe it's, yeah. Okay, it doesn't matter. So this will save for another day because we already have all the letters. We'll save this for our next letter. And up there, I'm going to make my border. I'm going to make my border. Sometimes I do the bottom at the same time, but this day I'm just going to do my top one. And you can set this one up another time or wait for next class on Monday. So this is for our letter P. And I think actually while I set this up, I'm just going to set it up and I'm not going to do the letter yet. And I'll tell you why in a moment. So this is the tricky part. So here's my, if I put my dotted line there, then my basement P will not have t room to get all the way down to the basement. So I'm going to mark this spot for a moment for myself, but I'm not going to put my dotted line there in this middle part. I'm going to put a dot here, and I'm going to see what's halfway between the bottom of my space and this middle point, and I'm going to put a dot here in that spot that is between the middle of this space and the middle of this space. So there's that. This is the middle of this. And I've got another dot in the middle of this space. And that is where I'm going to draw my line across for the bottom. This is almost, this is pretty much like a form drawing already, isn't it? Drawing these complicated lines to get our main lesson book set up is a challenge. No doubt it is a challenge. This is the underwater part. Now I'm going to erase this dot here that was in the middle, and I'm going to make a new dot. This is complicated, I realize. So halfway between here and here, halfway between the line I just drew and the top of my space, I'm going to say is right about in there, right about in there. You can get your grown-up to help eyeball that spot for you. And I'm going to draw my dotted line across. Now I'm ready to do my letter P, but yeah, let's just do it. Let's just do it. I guess um, 
I would have used purple for the letter P because purple starts with P. Okay, let's bring it a little closer. That's not very. Let's see what we can do. There we go. Okay. So with a with the purple chalk, I'm going to draw a straight line down from top to bottom. And then I'm going to start back at the top and finish my capital P. P is for purple and prints and pepper pot and pine cone. And the lowercase p, like that, down under the line that you write on. I'd actually put that all the way down to there. Down, back to the top, and around. Lowercase p. Same as the uppercase, but it goes, it's like it's sunk down in the water, or maybe hasn't grown up yet out of the, out of the water. <laughs> Some plants start at the bottom of the pond and grow up, don't they? All right, so there's my uppercase and lowercase p, and we do need a background for that as well. So I've got blue and purple and gold, so I will use a green, I guess, to do my background. P is for purple, and I got a bunch of things I found around my house that all start with the letter P. I wonder if you can think of anything. I have several things in the kitchen Whoops. start with P. And I found some stuff that belongs like in the workshop or the garage or the shed or wherever you keep your tools and parts and pieces of things. Hmm, pieces and parts. I also start with puff, 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 like Peter Piper. Something in the kitchen I thought of that I like to eat called a puff, puff, puff. I didn't bring it upstairs, but it's a puff, puff, puff. pickle. Yes. All right, let's see what we have here. Here are some of those things jangling around. All right, here, a couple of, oh, this is something that made me think of Auntie Jackie. Of course, we have a plant, and this is a, some, I think it's actually might be a pumpkin, which also starts with P, P, -p pumpkin plant, or it could be a, I think it's a pumpkin. Oh, I think gourds, like a birdhouse gourd or an epo gourd. Something else that's related to food and cooking is pepper flakes, pepper flakes of red pepper, hot spicy ones that you could, Sometimes grown like to put those on their pizza, which also starts with P, p pizza. And for breakfast, some people have a p p pancake for breakfast occasionally. I have our plant and our peppers, and I have um, also something else from the kitchen, a p p pan. Actually, I'd call that one a pot. And down here, I have a pan saute pan or omelet pan, maybe you might call it. And then one more thing from the kitchen. I have a p -p -p something you pour out water with or juice or something, a p -p pitcher, pitcher. And then um, some, some, t some uh, let's see, some tools, okay? So we have, this is a, a, a pipe wrench, pipe wrench. Mm -hmm. Adjustable like that, gets bigger when I go like that, turn that thing. A pipe wrench, and of course it's used on pipes. I couldn't find a proper pipe, proper, p -p -pro but I found a pipe fitting. Let's see, pipe fitting, used to connect some pipes together. And let's see, uh, more things from the garage. I found something that you use to dig a hole with. Can you guess? Especially if the ground, not a shovel, something the ground is rather hard and rocky and you really have to chop at it it's called a p -p -p pickaxe a very useful tool pickaxe okay it's got a sharp end for the really hard spots and a, a more like a digging end right there when you've got a little bit loosened up a little bit so that's the things i got from the shed the garden the garage now i have some some artistic stuff I have here a marker which is color p -p purple 
and a, something to write with, a p -p 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 pencil, green fancy pencil, and another thing you write with, a p pen, and then we have things like, uh, I thought of a p paint, watercolor paint, and of course this is a paint brush, and the result of those two things can be a painting that someone made. I didn't make this one. A painting. Paintbrush painting. Now, a couple more, a couple toys now. <laughs> oh, oh, one more thing from the kitchen. Plate. Mm -hmm. And something that's unrelated. A p -p -p penny. A one, one cent piece. It stands for one. Some of the money we have stands for lots of other things. There's a picture of one of the presidents that we had in the United States long ago called Abraham Lincoln. That's his name on, that's him on there. On the back is a building that they made specially for him because he did a lot of good things. They have a special building for him to remember him by. The Lincoln Memorial. All right. Okay, what about this? What's that? Ping pong. Okay. And now this is really a boxing glove, but my kids call it a punchy fist sometimes. <laughs> they put it on the bop each other with it a little bit. Um, some more toys. Here's Pooh Bear. Hello. I'm Pooh Bear and I like honey. Mmm. Pickled peppers? No, thank you. Pooh Bear. And another toy. This might be the last thing I have. Not really a toy. What do you call that? Puzzle. Puzzle. All right. So those are all the things I could find that start with P. See if you can go around the house and find a lot of things that start with P also. Okay. Let's see. What else do we have? I wanted to remind ourselves this story was rather unfortunate. The Singing Bone was the name of that story. And that was a messed up kind of a story, I would say, in a certain way. One of the Halloween kind of a story because there's a ghost in it, and the ghost comes to life because the truth was, in that story, different than someone was making it out to be. They were lying, weren't they? They did, committed a crime by killing somebody, his own brother buried and then the bone was carved years later by a shepherd into a mouthpiece for a horn and the horn told the truth the truth usually comes out in the end so good truth telling story and it's a little bit spooky because the spirit of that person that innocent kind brother came out through that bone back into the world and communicated so we were talking about our relatives. Uh, in many traditions, the relatives come, come closer to us in the, in the physical world uh, right around this time. Or the day after Halloween is the, the perfect day, they say, for connecting, listening to your relatives who have passed. So we uh, talked about that yesterday. And um, so the singing bone and I thought we should also go ahead and get a new main lesson page going for, um, for our words that we went over yesterday. We, walked, we talked about our consonant, vowel, consonant. Remember the vowels A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. Those are the vowels. You can sing them. A, E, I, O, U. U. That's the names of the vowels. A, E, I, O, U. And we have not done U yet, but we've done all the rest of them. And well, I hear a lot of noise coming from downstairs. I hope everybody's okay down there. That's, there is a grown-up down there taking care. I don't know, maybe you can't hear that, but I can. That's one of the things that happens if you work from home. It's all kinds of things that could happen. All right. All right, so we had um, some OT and OP words that I would like to put in our main lesson book. So 
you have your main lesson page again like this and this time instead of drawing a line that way we'll draw a line this way as we do when our when we write our words i think we just did this um on the blackboard yesterday and talked about them and learned them and now we'll put them in our main lesson book so we'll have a maybe one column maybe a little bit more than one column column go like that up and down and we'll write our words like that okay so here is my page right there and I still again I have the same rectangular shape it's similar at least see how this up and down side is longer it's like this is longer this way and it's shorter across there just like this if I was to turn it sideways to turn my whole blackboard sideways wouldn't I anyway anyway here we go here is my line down the middle that and I will I'll use my blue chalk I, I suppose or yeah, blue chalk I guess is fine and we had the O T and O P we talked about both I think O T is not really a word by itself so we'll right away we'll go ahead and put our favorite our new one today that we've the this is oct. Remember the O makes an octopus. Remember this is an octopus? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legs on my octopus. An O looks a bit like an octopus head. Ah, ot, ot, ot. Two sounds, ah and t, ot. Now let's put one up here. And we'll put our p up here. P at, p at, pot, p at, pot. Just like the letter P up there. Pot. Okay. I'm going to write my OT again, right underneath that OT and go back to some of the letters uh, D. Let's do D because that's a d, d, dot. That's a familiar word. D stint makes a d, d sound and the D looks like that. Let's spell it. D-O-T. The letters are called D-O-T. The sounds they make are d-a-t. If I do it on my arm, d Ah, t. First sound, d. Second sound, ah. Last sound, t. D. Ah, t. D. Ah, t. D. Ah, t. Dot. And let's go with G next because that's a familiar one. G. O. T. And the G makes a g sound most of the time. G. 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 Ah. The A ah for octopus and the T. G A T spells sounds like G A T G A T G A T. Okay? I didn't see you. Hot. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. H makes a ha ha sound. Ha. 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 H O T spells hot, hot. Okay, learning to read, learning to write, learning to spell all at the same time. Isn't that cool? So, trying our best just to do it as best we can. H O T. Let's do L next. O ah. Spells lot. L O T makes the sounds lot. 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 Three sounds lot. I think n is next. N is next. N is next. N makes an n sound. And if I put n in front of a. 
I get n -ot. N O T makes the sound N N O T N O T N O T N O T. Okay. Rot would be a good one to add. I guess I kind of have room for one more at the bottom. So we are way ahead in terms of where we might be um, moving right along through all this spelling stuff. So if you're not getting this yet, it's really okay. We will keep learning it and keep trying it and we will all get it little by little. So the next um, one of these I'll do the, on the other side, I think I'll use a different color. I'll use my purple. I think you can see that well enough when I use the purple. Okay. Let's see what we have with O P sound. O P. I like to start with P P O P. P O P. P P O P makes the sound P O P P O P P O P P O P P O P. I'm worried that we already did this in our main lesson book. Maybe we did. If we did, you can, if you already wrote these in your main lesson book, you don't have to do it again. I can't quite remember at this point. Um, cop, kind of a nickname for a police officer. Not the most respectful, maybe, but it's, they, I think it's acceptable. Um, let's see what else we have. Mmm. Something used to clean the floor. Mmm mop. Mmm mop. Mop. M O P spells mop. 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 T -t -t -t. How about t t t? Ah. T up spells the. Up, top, top. The first sound is t. The middle sound is ah. The last sound is p. T up. Break things up into parts. Learn to do it that way. So we could say. I guess we should finish. Let's see. S. can't think of any more right now. A, B, C. The B could be bop, I guess. B, B, bop. We did talk about that, I remember. When I sang the song. Little rabbit, foo, foo, I don't want to see you. Scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. Bop. I can't think of any more right now. I don't want to take up any more time puzzling over it. We'll leave it at that for now. And um, we're just about at time. And I would say that, boy, there's a lot of noise downstairs. I don't know if you can hear that. Kids running around playing. OK, so we. one thing I want to say is, like we talked about the other day, we can take off a sound. So if I say this word is pot, pot, I could say, let's just say it without the first sound, and just say ot. Ot, 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 ot. And over here we'd have op, if we took away the first sound. Op, 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 op. Trickier in this situation, since these all rhyme, would be to take out the last sound. We'd have p, ah, and da, and ga, and ha, and la, and na and ra if I was to take out the last sound, right? If I took off the last sound on this one, it would look like pa, ka, ma, ta, and ba. Some similar ones, maybe. Do we have any similar ones? Let's see. Oh, 
pa is the same with the first one here, pa, pa. Same word, just a different last sound. This one is pot, this one is pop, pot, pop, pop, pot. Okay, so that's enough of that. Breaking apart words, putting them back together again, combining them in funny ways, making up new words, and being silly about it is just as good as anything else, I'd say. So um, I would say um, that's enough for today is what I would say. And I look forward to seeing you again, or talking to you again at least, on Monday. Have a great weekend.